school, but the summer school is is not completely terrible. Uh, and I think that you know, that shows a lot towards or shows how much time and attention the organizers put into to getting the structures really right, to getting the who they invited really right. I'm learning a ton from the mini courses. I hope you are as well. Um, so, so maybe if everybody can un unmute while I'm still babbling for a second, um, and, and let's take a second to like make a ruckus and then thank the organizers for everything they did. Okay, so great. Final lecture, um, final theorem. Uh, uh, as we've apparently set up, by the way, um, questions in the chat go to Kyle, questions out loud come to me. And um, the notes are up on the website. I think they also are getting dropped in the chat in a second if you want to be able to like look back screen or something like that. Um, okay, so the, the, the question that we're going to be motivated by today is the following. Um, does there exist a simply connected four manifold, which is closed, uh, such that x does not oops, admit uh, a handle diagram without any one handles. And this, um, this property of admitting a handle diagram without any one handles, that's called being geometrically simply connected, which is a pretty reasonable name. Um, and I'm gonna abbreviate it GSC for the rest of the talk. So in the closed setting, this is a very hard question. There's there are essentially no known approaches towards it. Uh, but in the setting with boundary, quite a lot is known. So um, <clears throat> originally, Kassen proved an incredibly strong theorem about this. He showed that um, for contractible four manifolds, so that pi one of the boundary isn't trivial, so we now know that means so that the boundary isn't S3, um, these are actually uh, all not ge geometrically simply connected. So right, the question up top is asking in the closed case, can you give me a, a single example of a non-GSC four manifold? And Kassen is saying in the contractible case, it's all of them. <clears throat> so, so that's quite strong. Um, and we have another really strong result in the case with boundary as well, which, which Libman and Levine just proved a couple of years ago. It's not quite so strong. Uh, what, what they showed is that uh, there are four manifolds homotopy equivalent to S2, such that uh, for every x prime, which is homeomorphic to x, so in particular, x prime is allowed to be x, um, x prime is not geometrically simply connected. So, so they're saying that there are these big families of four manifold homotopy equivalent to S2 like every, everything in the family is, is homeomorphic and the whole family is not geometrically simply connected. Um, so this is not quite as strong as what Cass improved and it, and it can't be, right? We know that there are four manifolds homotopy equivalent to S2 that are GSC, not traces are homotopy two spheres and they don't have any one handles. Um, but, but what Lim and Levine are showing us is that this, this sort of phenomenon Cass and discover sees, which is that it, it can be the case that Sort of only the homeomorphism type matters like you do see that in the s2 setting as well <clears throat> so a couple of remarks about these um these theorems the the first is that um the proofs in both settings are entirely um just analyzing the boundary and that's that's why they can prove a theorem that's that's essentially independent of the, the smooth four manifold in question Another remark, or well, <clears throat> a final comment about that. What you know, what that means is that you always in the back of your mind, you're asking yourself, are the techniques here going to help me in the closed case? And and here, well, no, the techniques are entirely contained in the three manifold topology in this for, for these two proofs. Um, and there's another problem as well, which is that these theorems also are too strong for the closed case. So so let me say what I mean by that a little more precisely. Um, it's not too hard to show that 
for all um, closed four manifolds that are simply connected, there exists some other closed smooth four manifold, which is, I guess that'll be implicit here, uh, which is homeomorphic to the one you started with and such that X prime is geometrically simply connected. <clears throat> and this isn't that hard to check. You just look at the intersection form of, of X and then you notice that you already know a closed geometrically simply connected form unfold with that intersection form, assuming the Levinates conjecture. So, you know, these, these very strong theorems that say it's possible that every, <clears throat> it's possible that everything in this homeomorphism type is not GSC. Like that's, that's just not going to happen in the closed state. So, so the theorem uh, I want to talk us through the proof of today is, is weaker than these theorems, but, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, and what it says is that uh, there exist four manifolds, homotopy equivalent to S2, such that X is not geometrically simply connected, uh, but X is homeomorphic to an X prime, which is geometrically simply connected. Um, so let me tell you the, the arc of, of how the proof is going to work, um, <clears throat> as maybe you're coming to anticipate. We're going to uh, start <clears throat> by, by building something. So we're going to build x, uh, homotopy equivalent to s2. We're going to build something that's homeomorphic to it. And we're going to show that that thing is doesn't need to have any one handles. Fine. Um, then we're going to do something that, that's very standard in this field. Um, we're we're going to point out this lemma that says that if x were geometrically simply connected, that would imply that there's a PL2 sphere embedded in, in x generating H2. So uh, let me tell you what that means. Uh, we've seen a lot of topological and smooth surfaces embedded in four manifolds in, in this week, but not a lot of PL surfaces. So, so the definition of a PL surface is going to be, for our purposes, one that is smooth uh, away from a unique cone point singularity. Um, there is a, a sort of more formal definition of a PL surface, which, which maybe you've seen before, but in this dimension and co-dimension, it, it's equivalent to, to what I just said. So, so let's stick with that. <clears throat> so, so the second, um, the second line gives us our approach. It says, um, if we want to show that some that our X isn't geometrically simply connected, it's going to suffice to show that X doesn't have a PL2 sphere generating homology. So that's our plan. Um, and that would be a good plan if we, if we knew how to do this. Um, but this is really hard. There are not a lot of tools um, in the literature for obstructing PL services in four manifolds. And the, the, the thing that becomes hard when, when Kasson and Levine and Lidman run their proofs is, is sort of doing, doing this thing here, obstructing a PL2 sphere. Um, so what we're going to do is, is try to get out of it. Um, so, so we're going to prove a step three, and this is sort of the new content of the theorem. And step three is going to be to show that for, for our manifold X that we build, so this isn't true in general, but it will be true for us, um, there's a PL2 sphere generating H2 if and only if there's a smooth one. Do we have a question? Okay. <clears throat> and this is good news because this is uh, totally doable. We've been doing this for days now. Uh, so, so the final step of the proof is to show that there's no So 
smooth two-spirit generated homology. Uh, so let me pause there and check in for questions about um, about the outline or the, the statements. I see I see some chat flurry. Is this um, maybe something about the the line about the eleven eighths conjecture in the closed examples? Kyle will give it to me if we need it. Um, great. Let's uh, let's go. Let's do let's do step one. So this is going to be our x, this manifold here at left. So so let's observe what we have here. Um, I want you to squint at it and ignore ignore blue. Just look at the black and green uh, sub link of this Kirby diagram. And that should look familiar. We have this one one handle and this two handle running over it algebraically once. That's this little contractible manifold we've seen before. It's called the Maser manifold. So, so overall, this, this X is a contractible manifold with a single two handle stuck to it. So, so X is indeed a homotopy two sphere. Um, and in fact, we can check that its intersection form is just zero. So, so that thing has the algebraic topology we want. Um, we'll, we'll study it quite a bit in a second, but, but for now, I just want to build something homeomorphic to it that, that can be simplified. So we're getting really, um, we're getting really good at this. Um, how do we build something homeomorphic to this? Well, you know, what was X? It was a cork with a, a two handle stuck to it. So we're going to twist that cork. Um, that's gonna uh, give us this manifold where, where we <clears throat> have exchanged the dot and the zero on black and green. So, so this is our X prime and they're homeomorphic by Friedman. So now we'd like to see that X prime is geometrically simply connected. And for that, we, we probably want to do a canceling one, two pair. So um, to, to do a canceling one, two pair, I, well, I really need to know what runs over my one handle, right? Which isn't very clear in this picture when the one handle is a mess like that. So, um, so you do some isotopy, which, which I hope you'll allow me the liberty of having done in advance. Um, this diagram is, is isotopic to this one. So this is still X prime. <clears throat> All I really did here was, was just straighten out this, this green curve. So now we look at X prime and we hope for a canceling one, two pair. Um, black algebraically could do it. But um, geometrically, things don't look good. Like black is really stuck on itself right here. Um, but, we, but we have a trick for that too. This toolkit is, is getting to seem kind of exhaustive. Um, on the second lecture, we saw um, that sometimes when you don't have a canceling one, two pair ready to go, you can do handle slides to like set one up. And in the, uh, in the office hours on Monday, somebody asked me if there's a name for that move, like doing handle slides to set up a canceling one, two pair. And there's not, there wasn't, but um, I've, I've been taking submissions for one. And, uh, and <clears throat> uh, Jacob Caudell proposes that setting up for a canceling one, two pair should be called an alley-oop. Um, and the reason that's a, a really excellent name is because Canceling one, two pairs at the three manifold level are sometimes called a slam dunk. So we're setting up a slam dunk here. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, how are we gonna do it? So, so we'd like to make this black two handle cancel the one handle. And right now it's stuck on itself right here. So what we're gonna do is, is try to undo that class by sliding black over blue like that. <clears throat> and, and maybe hopefully on the, on the very last day of the lecture, you'll permit me to zoom in um, to do that quickly. So let me let me show you what happens when you actually do that slide. I guess you should get something like 
this. Um, black and blue are not, they have zero linking. So my framing doesn't change when I do that. Okay, so, so that's the slide. So that made our picture look worse. Alley-oops always do. Um, but, but things are actually okay. What were we trying to do? We were trying to make it so that black now geometrically only runs over the one handle once. And I claim we, we do have that here because this arc of the black, it's no longer stuck on itself down there. So it could be pulled through um, off the one handle and then we'd only see black running over the one handle right here. When you pull this arc up through the one handle, like you'll get blue running over the one handle, but, but that's, that's fine. So I'm not gonna finish that cancellation, but, but what we see here is that X prime has a canceling one, two pair. And once we do perform the cancellation, then there's no more one handle. So X prime is geometrically simply connected. Uh, any questions about that? So we get to step two. Um, and this is this, this sort of standard lemma that being geometrically simply connected, oops, means you have a, a PL2 sphere um, representing any, any homology class you're interested in. So um, how do we prove this? Well, if, if you're geometrically simply connected, then you have a handle diagram like this. Um, so you know, maybe we're thinking about having like a couple two handles in here. One of them's really fat. Um, and, and then in this picture, we can find um, a rep, any, uh, any H2 class is represented by a surface we can build by taking a collection of cores of our two handle. So, you know, maybe like two copies of this one and, and one here. Um, and then the boundary of those cores is some link in, in S3 in the boundary of the zero handle. Um, and so to sort of finish like building a, a surface that represents your homology class, you, you take some surface in, uh, in the zero handle that has boundary, the link that comes from the boundary of your cores. So, I don't know, something like this. Okay, so this is some smooth surface uh, generating our homology, which is you know fine, but not what we want. So we don't want uh, this. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna take the same set of cores, get rid of this. So, so the boundary of those cores is this link in S3. Um, we're going to band that link together however you want, uh, just so that it's, uh, it becomes a knot, so n minus 1 bands. And so now what I see is sort of up in the handles, I have this disk, which is all of those disks banded together, and the boundary of that disk is just a single knot here. And we'll finish by taking the cone on that knot. And this thing is now an S2 because it's just disks on both sides. Um, it just has this single component singularity. <clears throat> I also will, will need to point out um, a corollary of this lemma, which is that um, if, if X is geometrically simply connected, then <clears throat> there exists some not J uh, such that the zero trace on J embeds smoothly in X and generates H2. And by, by the trace generates H, H2, I mean that the the inclusion map on homology sends a generator for the homology of the trace to the generator of the homology of X. Um, so, so why is this? 
Well, you, you look at this surface we built in the lemma, this PL2 sphere, and you start by taking a little ball around the cone point singularity because we don't really like that point. We don't understand it. So we're just going to gobble it up in a ball. And then the whole rest of this PL2 sphere, it's smoothly embedded out away from that cone. And, and what, what is the surface out there? Well, it's just a disk because this was a sphere. So you can go and grab a tubular neighborhood of that smoothly embedded disk out there. And um, I won't finish drawing the picture up in the handles because it gets very messy, but, but what do we have here? We have a, a little ball with a thickened up disk stuck to it along some knot. So this is some knot trace. And it's zero framed because the intersection form of X was, was zero. I want to make a really important remark about this J, which is that you have no idea what it is. Right, like how do we prove the lemma? We, um, we assumed that our manifold was geometrically simply connected. And so we just like got some handle, like we just, this, this handle decomposition off to the right it is kind of imaginary. We assumed it was there. So, so you have no idea what what the you know where the two handles are stuck to so you don't know anything about like what this link was we used to build the sphere so you really don't know anything about this not j and so like when you first see this lemma it doesn't really seem like it's it's going to make your life that much easier towards showing that some manifold isn't geometrically simply connected because if you want to show the manifolds not geometrically simply connected you have to show that there's, there's no embedded trace generating homology for every single knot, which is, which is kind of hard to do. That's actually what Levine and Lidman do, um, but, but it takes some serious work. Let me, let me check in for questions. Cool. So we're going to try to get, get out of having to do that. First, we're going to try to turn the page. What's going on with my iPad? There we go. Um, <clears throat> so, so we're going to show that having a PL2 sphere generic homology for our, us is the same as having a smooth two sphere. And to show that, I need two facts. I need this lemma and a proposition. So, so starting with the lemma. Um, so, so this lemma is um, the very best lemma in, in all of mathematics. I don't know if you knew that there was a, an absolute best one and that it, you were missing it, but there, there was and you were, but, uh, but here it is. This lemma says that, um, that these manifolds, not traces, they characterize sliceness. So a not K is slice, if and only if it's zero trace embeds in S. And this lemma is, is basically the first paragraph of this 1958 Fox and Milner paper. Um, and that's the paper in which they give the definition of not concordance. So, so this lemma is somehow like incredibly fundamental to the study of slice knots. <clears throat> and, and let me give you um, a proof of, of one direction of it. So let's assume that our not K is slice. So here's K in, in S3, which is bounding a four ball off to the left. And we're assuming that K is slice, so it bounds some disk. And it's a smooth disk, so we have a tubular neighborhood. Okay, and now what we're trying to show is that our, our trace on this knot embeds in S4. <clears throat> to do that, we'll, um, we'll try to get an an S4 somewhere in this picture by, by gluing another four ball onto ours along their common boundary. So this whole thing is, is S4 now. And now we're looking for the trace on K embedded in here. And it's, it's in fact, not so hard to spot. Um, we'll take that new four ball we just stuck on and the neighborhood of our slice disk. And that's a four ball with a thickened up D2 stuck to it along K. Ooh. Now I can turn the page, charming. 
So um, a couple exercises to go with the lemma. Uh, make sure you understand why it's the zero trace. Uh, I sort of, you know, I think the picture shows you that it's that it's some trace. Um, check check that that framing should be zero. And the, the second part of the exercise is to prove the other direction. It's not too hard. Um, maybe a, a hint though is that you'll probably want to appeal to Surf and Pelé's theorem that there's no interesting way to embed a four ball smoothly into S4. <clears throat> So, so that's going to be one of the, the, the observations that goes into this sort of swindle in step three. Um, the other observation is that our manifold X has a special property. And this will be the reason why like this swindle works for our X, but isn't, you know, it's not always the case that having a PL sphere is the same as having a swing sphere. So the observation is that our X embeds smoothly in S4. And that's not so hard to see. We're just gonna we're just gonna check this directly. So um, here's our x. I reproduce the handle diagram right here. And um, the first thing I want to observe is that x embeds smoothly into some other four manifold, which I'll call x double prime. So um, this is x, and x double prime is this thing, where you stick one more two handle to x along that curve. Um, so X is smoothly embedded in there because we, we sort of built the embedding. Now X double prime, um, this, is a, this is an unnecessarily complicated panel diagram for X double prime, right? Um, it has a canceling one, two pair. It has like, in fact, a really canonical obvious one um, on like in the rest of our life when our canceling one, two pairs have a tendency to be messy. In this case, like you can cancel the one handle with that yellow two handle. And, and you know, when you tried to do the slides in advance of the cancellation, you'd slide all of these curves over the yellow. And what that would do to the diagram is, is you know, basically nothing. The green and blue link would be unchanged. They would just sort of pop over that yellow curve. So they're not on the one handle anymore. So performing this handle cancellation is really the same as just kind of deleting all of that. And it leaves us with the same blue and green two handles. <clears throat> and now I claim that this blue and green link isn't very interesting. So, so X double prime is really just the four ball with a pair of two handles stuck to it along the two component on link with the zero zero framing. <clears throat> so I, I'm not gonna check this explicitly, but, um, but you can check that when you close this up, this isn't a very interesting link. Okay, so, so now what I wanna claim is that, is that it's not hard to see that X double prime embeds an S4. How do you see that? Well, okay, so, so X double prime is the trace on this two component on link or like a, a sort of trace thing on this two component on link. So let me sort of draw a two component on link in, <clears throat> So right over here at the right, I have the schematic picture of S4 divided up into two four balls. Um, I'm thinking about my unlink as sitting in the middle level. And, and I know that the unlink bounds a pair of smooth disks in the four ball, um, maybe in this top four ball. And so I can spot X double prime embedded in here by taking the lower four ball and tubular neighborhoods of these two disks for the unlink. So this is going to be my X double prime. Deck. And that whole thing like was sort of constructed inside of, of S4. Any questions about that? Okay, so now we want to put these we want to put these facts together um, 
in order to promote our PL sphere to a smooth one. So let's suppose we have a PLS2 sphere embedded in our X. Um, then as we observed on the last slide, there exists some knot J such that the zero trace on J is embedded smoothly in X. And X, by what we just proved, is embedded smoothly in <clears throat> S4. So that tells me that the trace on J, whatever this not J is, I don't know what it is, but, but whatever it is, it's trace embeds in S4. So the trace embedding lemma tells me that J is slice. Over here to the right, I, I drew our standard schematic for the trace of J. And, and what, what do we learn from the fact that J is slice? Well, we le learn that J bounds a disk in, say, this four ball, which we can cap off in the trace to a two sphere that generates homology. So there's a two sphere embedded smoothly in the trace of J generating H2, which is embedded in X. And what we saw on the last slide is, is that the homology is still right, that the generating class here goes to the generating class here. And, and that's what we wanted to show, right? We started with this PL sphere and we've kicked it up into a smooth sphere. Questions? So the last step of the proof is um, it's really straightforward now. Um, and in fact, I'm, I'm not even going to go through it explicitly. Um, you should check as an exercise, and it will just be a, a completely routine by now application of, of the Stein adjunction inequality that there aren't any smooth two spheres in here generating H2. I know it was just a second ago, but, but that's, that's the end of the proof. So, so let me pause here and let people digest and, and see if there are any questions. So um, I wanted to leave you with a couple of, of exercises that are that, that you're going to prove using the same type of argument that, that we just ran. Um, and the exercise is, so, so there's this little contractible manifold here in blue and black that we've seen a few times. Uh, maybe you remember this is called the Maser manifold. Um, sometimes it's called the octolute quark. And, and what you should try to show is that this curve gamma does not bound a PL disk in the Maser manifold. Um, and maybe that sounds like a sort of niche uh, statement, but, but that was our, in fact something that called the Zeeman conjecture. It was originally proved by Selman in, in 91. Um, and, and you should be able to prove that pretty easily uh, using an argument of, of the flavor of the one I just gave. Uh, and you should also check that, that you know why this um, fact here implies that the Maser manifold is not geometrically simply connected. You know, we know it's not GSC because, because Kasson tells us that, but, but you can prove that too once you do this. <clears throat> um, so, so let me remark on a couple of, of open questions or, or follow-up questions, I think, that come after, um, after our theorem. Maybe the first is this general thing I'm supposed to remark upon, which is like, does this work in the closed setting? Where did I really use the boundary here? And um, you know, the first answer to the second question is that I didn't use the boundary one bit. We never looked at it. Um, <clears throat> the 
the reason we really, the way we really use boundary is that we have this embedding of our manifold into S4. Um, and that's, that's not going to happen if the manifold had been closed. And it was that embedding that let us um, do, this, do this trick where, where we could promote our singularity to something smooth. Um, so, so that's the piece that you're missing when you try to run this in the closed case. And I haven't, I haven't seen any ideas about how to get around that, but, but if anybody, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk about that more. Um, maybe a couple more, uh, a couple more sort of nailed down questions that, that follow this theorem is, um, so, so we just showed that there are simply connected four manifolds that require at least one, one handle. The question is, can you uh, can you show that there are manifolds that need more? So do there exist S4 to be connected, which require like greater than or equal to two one handles? And there's absolutely nothing known about this. I have no idea how an argument would go. Um, this is this is quite related to uh, a really hard problem in three manifold topology, which asks. Um, are there three manifolds? Um, well, okay, let me let me give you a little context first. So you know that all three manifolds can be described by Dane surgery on some link. Um, and you might ask like, how complicated does that link have to be? And we know that it can have to be a little bit complicated. We know that there are three manifolds that can't be described by surgery on a knot. Um, but that that's it, that's the best we can do in, in 2021. So, so we don't know whether there exist three manifolds which are not um, surgery on a link for L having only two components. Maybe you need to specify that Y is like a homology sphere or something. Yeah, thanks. Let's make that an integer homology sphere or just a, or a rational homology sphere. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks, Clayton. <clears throat> Otherwise, right, uh, rank of homology will give you a lower bound on the number of components you need. Cool. Uh, okay, and then uh, one more sort of follow-up question is, <clears throat> so, so we showed that there are assembly connected manifolds that need one handles, um, but our assembly connected manifolds don't have any three handles in our handle diagrams of them. So they don't need three handles. Um, but you might you might wonder about that. And that's in fact on the on the Kirby list. So do there exist simply connected four manifolds uh, which require both one and three handles? Other questions? Oh, good. So people in the chat are, are fixing my emission about emission about the what requirements you want in that why. Very good. Um, so so in fact, you know, let, let me let me pause for a second and say that um, we we've now covered all the ground that that I wanted to cover in this mini course. Um, the goal I had was to try to set up this this box of would basically look like tricks um, that that can frequently be assembled into proofs of some, I think, somewhat interesting results and, and show you what those tricks are and, and how they can be played off each other sometimes. Um, and this was this was sort of the last proof I wanted to give. So um, in in the last 20 minutes, I'm I'm now going to try to give you two new tricks and two new applications. Uh, it'll be like a tiny little extra crash course at the end of the crash course, but um, but maybe I'll I'll pause one more time for people to not ask me any questions um, to see if anybody has anything about like the general themes of of the course. This was sort of the end of your of your regularly scheduled content. So this will not be on the test, right? 
it will not be I, <laughs> no maybe i'll give like an extra never mind i was gonna say there's like an extra special test for for lecturers but like i don't want your extra special test so never mind <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Um, not on the test, super fast, don't take notes, let's build some stuff. So um, yesterday I built, I showed you how Kyle likes to build pairs of disks for the same knot in the four ball. And um, it turns out that, that that three component link switcheroo business um, had a bit of a history and it has some friend, friend three component link switcheroo businesses. So that's what we're gonna learn right now. Um, and what these, these businesses are going to do for us is that they're going to show us how to build knots K and J, um, which have either of two things. So there'll be two constructions here. First, we're going to build knots with diffeomorphic traces. And second, we're going to build knots with homeomorphic zero surgeries. Um, okay, so in the second lecture, we already learned how to do something related to this. We learned how to build knots with homeomorphic traces by doing a cork twist. Um, that's a little uh, weaker than this. <clears throat> In fact, the whole point then was that the traces were not diffeomorphic. Um, and certainly those traces, they're, they have homeomorphic boundaries, so they have this, but the construction I'm gonna give you here is more general than the one we learned back then. Um, okay, and uh, these constructions both are useful and I'll give you uses of them. Um, also in the next 18 minutes. So, um, so uh, maybe a final comment. Um, this, this first link business I'm about to talk you through um, comes from the, the old era of, of before Hayden and, and this one got written down um, after Hayden. So, okay, um, what, are these, what are these tricks? Uh, let's start by building knots with diffeomorphic traces. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna build a three component link in S3. Uh, subject to some hypotheses. So we're going to make it so that if you consider the red and blue sublink, um, that's isotopic to a link where the blue knot can be whatever it wants, but the red knot has to be a little boring, like meridian for the blue. So maybe an example would be something like uh, this. <clears throat> so right, blue's whatever it wants, red doesn't like get in a very interesting way, and, and also red's an unknown. That's the first hypothesis. The second hypothesis is sort of a symmetric thing. I'm also going to require that the way the red and green link is just the green knot, whatever that wants to be, with a little meridian. So uh, if we want to add that to our link, maybe we would add something like this. Uh, oh dear, uh, I don't know that. Oh no. Okay. Right, something like that. The green's going over the blue uh, here and here. Um, okay, but, but what's important about this is that the green and the red are linked in a pretty boring way. Um, very good. And the final requirement, um, and this is really kind of just like algebraic bookkeeping, is I want the linking of blue and green to be zero. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Kyle called his ABC, so I respected his names. I called him RPG. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, that's fine. That's a three component link. We're trying to build knots with diffeomorphic traces. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna take this link and we're gonna use it to define a four manifold. We're gonna let X be the four manifold you, you get by dotting R. So R is always an unknot. That's part of the hypothesis. So you can always dot it. And then attaching uh, two handles along B and G. Uh, and O, oh, they should be zero framed. So this is some four manifold and it's um it's got a kind of flabby handle decomposition right like this first hypothesis here is guaranteeing for me that red and blue are a canceling one two pair so you can take x and you can cancel red and blue and what that will get you is some very complicated green two handle stuck to the four ball 
and that's a knot trace. So X is diffeomorphic to zero trace on some knot, which we'll call KG. And you get this by canceling R and B. Um, and I got a little help myself here. It's some, um, it's some knot trace on, on that green knot. <clears throat> and symmetrically, uh, you also know that red and green are a canceling one, two pair that's built into the hypothesis. So you can cancel them and that will get you that this is also some trace on some blue knot. And that's what we wanted to do, build knots with diffeomorphic traces. Um, so a couple of exercises following the construction, uh, check that I didn't jump the gun. So R is R prime is zero. And once you know that, um, modify the construction um, uh, to get R equals R prime equals N for your choice of N. Okay. Um, so that's not so diffeomorphic traces. Now let's build knots with homeomorphic zero surgeries. So how are you gonna do it? You're gonna define a three component link in S3, sound familiar? Um, but in this case, uh, I'm gonna let you choose the framings. So you're gonna choose yourself a framed link. Um, let me just name your framings, a uh, little r, little b, and little g. Um, and here are the rules you are subject to. So you need to make your link so that if you did little r and little b surgery on red and blue, that would get you S3. So what's an example of something like this? Maybe, I don't know, maybe R is still an unknot, but it's it has some interesting framing now, R, which isn't necessarily zero. And maybe B is like that. Um, and let's say it is zero framed here. So I claim that the surgery on this thing is, is S3. Um, you could think of that as because we could take zero to be a, we could take that to be the boundary of a one handle and this would be a one, two pair. So maybe something like that is allowed. Uh, the second hypothesis is that you also need to set up your link so that if you do RG surgery on R and G, that needs to give you back S3. So maybe in the picture you wanna take something like this. And let's zero frame that as well. Um, so again, the green and red in isolation are the hot flank and one of them zero framed. So this has, a, this has an S3 surgery. And then there's a bookkeeping requirement. I wanna know that if you did homology on the whole, if you did surgery, sorry, on the whole link, and then you read off H1, that had better be Z. Okay, so, so we built a link. What we're actually trying to do here is build a pair of knots with homeomorphic zero surgeries, but, but maybe you can see where this is going because it's, it's quite similar to last time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna define a three manifold Y to be surgery on the whole link. And now, so, okay, like Y is, this sort of diagram, the surgery diagram over here. And if I squint at, at Y and just look at the red and blue, then I know that that's S3. And then if I like let my vision go slightly less fuzzy and remember that there's a green knot there, that green knot, it's, it's some knot in S3 because red and blue give S3. So this is, you know, we can write this maybe as, um, the, you know, this is sort of unnecessarily unpleasant notation, but you can think of this as surgery on the green after you've done surgery on the red and blue, and, and that's just S3. Um, <clears throat> and the green knot, like once you, once you straighten out to a standard picture of KG will, will be, you know, I don't know, something. Um, and here I have not jumped the gun by writing down the zero framing um, because I'm demanding that the homology of, of Y for homology is Z and, and that can only happen if this is zero. So that's why this is surgery on 
some green knot, but again, symmetrically, it also has to be surgery on some blue knot. Um, any questions about either of those constructions? So, so, so the key here is that essentially like the curve that you would like want to dot is not actually zero framed. That is, um, that is the reason why you do not immediately get diffeomorphic traces. Yeah. But this could be much more flexible than that. Like I gave you not particularly interesting, like R and B, right? Like the reason they surgered to S3 here was, was not that interesting. It could be a more complicated red and blue knot that had link, sorry, that had an S3 surgery. And then, and then your question sort of wouldn't make sense, like, or even further away from the traces construction, that's all. Sure. Um, okay, so so I was going to um, give you a couple of exercises and, and state a theorem about these constructions, but maybe for the sake of time, because I really want to tell you what you can do with these constructions, um, I'll just ask uh, one, one open question about them and, and then give the applications. So um, the open question is, um, so for both of these constructions, we kind of started in the middle, like we built a link and then it spat us a pair of knots with homeomorphic surgeries or diffeomorphic traces, but like we just had to take what God gave us in terms of what those knots were going to be. Um, so, so the open question uh, in general is like, which knots can you get like this? So which K um, arise as KB in one of these constructions? <clears throat> and, and maybe this is particularly Kelly compelling um, when KG is, is not KB. And, you know, maybe you just think that's a niche question for me because I like um, these constructions, but um, we're gonna see that, that you maybe really wanna know the answer to that question. And we're gonna see that from a couple of applications. So the first application is gonna be of the second construction, not with homeomorphic zero surgeries. And this application um, is towards this lemma that I stated uh, in this third lecture, um, which said that if you have a pair of knots with homeomorphic zero surgeries and let's say K is slice and let's say J is not, then the bunk rate conjecture is false. Uh, and with six minutes remaining, I think I have time to very quickly sketch how this goes. So um, since K is slice, it has a slice disc and that disc has an exterior, which maybe schematically looks something like this. So four ball with a disc cut out of it. And we saw that the boundary of this exterior is the zero surgery on K. So what we can do is we can take the trace on J, which has boundary zero surgery on J. And we can glue these two manifolds together by the homeomorphism phi that exists between those two three manifolds by assumption. And that's, um, that's something, that's some closed four manifold. And it's an exercise, a not completely trivial one, uh, sorry to check that W is a homotopy four sphere. Um, also, the zero trace on J, it's embedded in W <clears throat> smoothly, like by setup. And so, if W were diffeomorphic to S4, then the trace embedding lemma would say, all right, well, then the trace of J embeds in S4. So that implies that J is slice, which it's not. Okay. 
Great. So um, here's the trace embedding lemma coming up again um, as like a handy little trick for getting you from nowhere to somewhere kind of interesting. Uh, and also, once you once you have this lemma, maybe you're a little more interested in my question, which is which knots uh, admit some other knot that has the same zero surgery? Because maybe you would like to take your favorite slice knot and uh, find some other knot with the same surgery and, and hopefully find that that other knot is a slice. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of remarks about, um, about this application. Uh, four minutes left, very good. Uh, <clears throat> If you if you try to power this llama, you 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 find you take your favorite slice knot, you found a knot that shares a trace a surgery with it, um, but it turns out that that other knot is is actually slice. Um, I mean, you're not having the day you could have been having, but that does not imply that W is standard. It just implies that you didn't prove anything. Um, so so whether or not sort of this like works. And, and disproves the Poincaré conjecture, it's it's just a really nice way to build relatively straightforward homotopy spheres, which isn't completely obvious, I, I don't think. Um, and maybe I won't make the other remark. Very good. OK, one more application, three more minutes. Um, this is an application of, of the other construction, so of building knots with diffeomorphic traces. Sorry, that's a typo. This should... Okay, so so let's suppose um, you have some knot K in S3 that you would like to show isn't slice, but it's not going well. Um, let's say that all of your slices of variants vanish. So um, that's not a particularly mathematically precise statement, but but you try all your invariants and you don't get any information out of them. Um, but you still like to know that your knot isn't slice. So so here's what you can do: you can build um, J with the same trace as K, <clears throat> and now the trace embedding lemma is going to come in again. It's going to show me that um, if if k were slice, which maybe is what you're trying to abstract, then all right, then its trace embeds in S4. But these manifolds have the same trace, so the trace on J embeds in S4. So therefore, trace embedding lemma, J would have to be slice. Okay, so. Instead of showing that K isn't slice, which you're having trouble doing, you could show that J isn't slice. You also want to know here that J isn't concordant to K, right? Because um, slices and variants have a way of being concordance and variants. Um, so you don't just want to switch to some not J that's, that's concordant to K. That'll have all the same invariants and it won't actually be helpful. Um, but what we saw in lecture three is that at least having having homeomorphic traces doesn't have to preserve the concordance class. Um, and in fact, diffeomorphic traces doesn't preserve concordance either, it turns out. So like we we haven't just sort of superficially changed our knot. Like we've, we've quite possibly jumped concordance classes. So it's really quite possible now that our invariants should behave very differently on J than they do on K. And, um, and, and that sometimes turns out to be the case. So, so then you, you know, show that some uh, <clears throat> invariant for J does not vanish. And, and then, and then you've, you've obstructed the sliceness of your original knot. So um, that's, that's a nice little swindle that'll get you out of like difficult concordance or sliceness problems sometimes, but um, it only works if you can find a J. So again, um, that motivates this question that I claim is interesting, like which, which knots have some other knot that um, shows the trace. And I'm gonna stop there. Thanks so much. That's that, uh, thank you, so. Are there any questions?
Uh, yeah, I, I might ask something very, very uh -oh. quickly. So, the so there's I know there's work that comes from Hagart Fleur homology um, that provides a partial negative answer to this open question, because for certain knots you have characterizing slopes where the three manifold, the homeomorphism type of the three manifold that is surgery on that knot for some framing actually determines the knot. So for example, right, the trefoil zero surgery determines it. Yeah, you don't um, need Hagar floor for that. You just need data. For that. But I was wondering if there's, um, like if you could maybe briefly summarize what's known about um, when, like which knots or which families of knots or like roughly what slopes um, we already know sort of don't uh, like characterize their, their knots that they came from. So that is like, what are the knots that you should not look at if you're trying to answer this question? Sure. Um, I wasn't too far lying when I said it's almost completely open. Completely so Dave open. showed okay. us a long time ago that the figure eight knot and both trefoils are characterized by their zero surgeries. Um, that's all we actually know about. Uh, there's, there's work of Duncan McCoy, and, and probably I should also say Mark Lackenby here, that strongly suggests that maybe L-space knots are going to be characterized by their zero surgeries. Um, but it doesn't actually pin that down, um, to my knowledge. And I think that's all we got. OK. What about for framings other than zero? Yeah, good. So um, what Duncan and Lackenby can often show is that maybe certain types of knots, like L-space knots, only have finitely many positive integer non-characterizing slopes. Slope. That's a very hard sentence to get right. Um, and maybe they can even hem them in, in terms of some weird function, in terms of the genus of the knot or something. Right. And um, of course, the point there is that non-integer isn't particularly interesting to us because like a knot, if we're interested in the trace, not just the surgery, then we're always going to get an integer surgery. Yeah, that's right. Also, the setting is just completely different for, right. or not the setting, the the theorems are completely different for rational slopes. So you should expect that for a non-integer slope, generically for any knot, that surgery will be characterizing. Right. But um, I don't know those theorems as well because they don't occur as the boundary of four manifolds, or at least not like this. Great, but so for slope zero, we know for certain that that characterizes the trefoil, uh, the figure eight, and uh, possibly L-space knots, but that hasn't been nailed down yet. Yeah, that's right. right. And then we the, have the some unknot. results in the and the unknot, of course. Cool. Thanks. Cool. More questions. All right. Well, maybe, maybe you, I'm oh, sorry. I have another one. Oh, please maybe. go ahead. Uh, maybe you said this before this in this construction too, um, where you constructed knots with the same zero surgery. Um, do they uh, do you have examples where they uh, this diffeomorphism does not extend over the trace? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So um, I have all sorts of examples like that. Um, it's even worse. So so let me state these exercises. So um, in fact, there are. So the hard exercise in red is that um, show that there exist K and J with homeomorphic zero surgeries. Um, and non homeomorphic traces. So it doesn't even extend as a homeomorphism. Um, and then you also know that that we can have homeomorphic zero surgeries with non diffeomorphic traces, we proved that back in lecture three. And in that case, the traces were homeomorphic. Is the idea there that you're gonna use like topological sliceness or something? Um, I don't, if you can run that, then you should tell me about it. My idea here is that I'm gonna take R to be odd 
and then I'm going to do some stuff and then I'm going to look at the intersection form. And also I'm going to do some stuff about boundary maps and Snappy is going to get involved. This exercise is in red. Okay. What is the blue exercise? The blue exercise is um, that there exist K and J with homeomorphic zero surgeries. Let's name that homeomorphism. This is really sort of what the original question was maybe getting at, um, such that uh, there does not exist a homeomorphism between the traces extending, extending the phi. So it's not so strong as like fully distinguishing the traces up to homeomorphism. It's just saying that that homeomorphism doesn't come from a homeomorphism between the traces. And again, here, you're gonna wanna use the construction up there with R odd, um, but, but here Snappy's not gonna get involved. Did you say it does not exist? Uh, Thank you, does not exist. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> that's not what I meant to do <laughs> there. Okay, thanks. 